This is the Big Gay Fiction Podcast, the show for avid readers and passionate fans of gay romance fiction. Each week, we bring you exclusive author interviews, book recommendations, and explore the latest in gay pop culture. Welcome to a special edition of the Big Gay Fiction Podcast devoted to reviews of the Bad Valentine series of shorts. Now, in episode 175, we'll review Temporary Dad by Dev Bentham. And now we're going to take a look at the other three shorts that are in this wonderful Valentine-centric series. So we're going to kick it off with another one of your reviews. What have you got to kick us off? Yes. Um, the first book I want to talk about is Hidden Hearts by Claire London. Now, like the other books in this series, um, this story starts off with the same sentence, nothing good ever came of a valentine. And uh, this particular valentine uh, is in the form of a sort of, it's it's a dating event, and it's sort of a cross between like, uh, a hookup app and speed dating and I'll explain in a second hmm. so Hidden Hearts by the art beloved friend and author uh, Claire London uh, is a, a really sexy rom-com opposite attract kind of story um, our first main character is a guy named Kel and he is like the big strong silent type he is a mechanic and he is covered in tattoos. And our second hero is a guy named Ethan, uh, and he is a well-meaning, nice guy, but he literally has no filter. Um, <laughs> he, whatever he thinks, it comes right flying right out of his mouth. Um, and unfortunately, he is uh, accident prone. Not just accident, it's like disaster prone. Wherever oh, no. wherever he goes, <laughs> shit falls to pieces all around him. So um, the uh, the inciting incident of the story is, is that both of our heroes are signed up for this Valentine's Day event. Um, friends or family members in certain cases have signed Kel and Ethan up through this app. And the app, like, matches them with their ideal valentine. And the idea is, is they're going to show up in this uh, one location and uh, sit down and have a dinner with this perfect valentine. And if it doesn't work out, they can move on to someone else um, that um, essentially wasn't hooked up through this, like, chintzy app <laughs> but when um and, and and kel and ethan both go under duress they think this is a horrible stupid idea but you know they've been single for a while you know their love life is kind of like <laughs> so they decide you know what the hell i might as well give it a shot so um they both show up uh and like ethan's mouth immediately falls open it's like this tall gorgeous hunk of a guy like covered in like butch tattoos this is like my ideal man i can't believe this is happening to me and, and of course disasters immediately happen uh but despite this uh kel is like quite taken with ethan um and uh they both uh, despite the uh, many obstacles that are thrown in their way uh they both um try desperately hard to make things work um, a, a ton of different uh, disasters befall them, uh, but uh, through their courtship, they eventually make things work. Now, some of the things that I liked about this book are, of course, uh, I think one of the hallmarks uh, of Claire London's stories are always uh, likable main characters. Mm -hmm. You're always going to be rooting for them. And also, there is a really funny secondary cast of characters, you know, friends and family members who um, maybe are butting in when they shouldn't be, but they mean well nonetheless. So I really enjoyed Kel's and Ethan's story an awful lot, and I highly recommend Hidden Hearts by Claire London. It's interesting that your book had so many disasters kind of built into it. Mm -hmm. Mine did, too. <laughs> uh, I read Love Magic uh, by Jesse Lee Ryan, uh, this is the first book that I've read of Jesse's, and I think I'm going to need to dig up some more because I so much enjoyed this. Uh, in this story, we meet Oliver, who's a musician and a composer in his own right, uh, and Derek, who, as you might be able to guess from the title, is a magician, or or so we think. 
You'll have to figure that out for yourself later. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. What I do you know. mean? Well, is he like a rabbit out of a hat kind of magician? Or is he like some he's douchey Chris Angel kind of well, illusionist? He's not douchey, but he is. <laughs> folks think he's an illusionist. Okay. But there's more to it than that. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Then continue. Thank you. <laughs> now, they have one of the cutest cute meets that I've ever seen. Oliver's playing in a park. He's playing one of his original compositions on a violin, just to kind of test it out. And Derek arrives and starts to perform some of his illusions and magic alongside him. Um, that kind of draws them together, and they decide to go on a date and start dating. But things don't quite work right. And there's a reason behind that, but Derek doesn't really want to talk about it because he's embarrassed. Uh, but we end up with a date where Derek just rushes out with, he's like, oh, I have a work emergency and he, and he skitters away. Uh, and another one that he just flat out doesn't show up to. And that's the point where Oliver's just kind of done because Derek doesn't show up to the symphony premiere of his new work. Um, and that's, that's just not cool because there's no reasoning behind it. Uh, and what it turns out is that when Derek gets nervous or uptight or like, you know, stressed, his magic, which in this case is telekinesis, gets way out of control. Oh. Um, so, you know, where other people might stammer or, you know, maybe get a little klutzy or, you know, get sweaty or whatever, you know, <laughs> things can fly about the room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's inconvenient. <laughs> uh, you know, nearby water fountains can spray water, uh, you know, oh, no. in unexpected places. Oh, uh, no. And it's kind of crazy. Um, and, of course, Oliver is so skeptical that that is the, the reason behind, you know, why he didn't choose to show up places or why he darted away. And it actually, as much as Derek wants to, to make it work with Oliver, he's not sure that he can because he's... He's so uptight around this awesome guy that he's really fallen hard for. And the magic elements are one of the things that I love about how Jesse's written this book because there's so much, you know, they're, they're rooted in a reality. Uh, so it's not like this whole, not a whole magical realm has been created here because, you know, we've all seen movies where the telekinesis is, is a thing. Um, and, and she's, Derek is so sweet. I felt so badly for him because he wants this to work and he's got to figure out how to either get over his kind of angsty nervousness or he's got to figure out how to control his powers um, so that he's just not making the world around them, you know, go bonkers. <laughs> um, and it's really, Oliver's great too, but I mean, Derek is the one who really won my heart here because he's trying so hard. Um, the other thing that I really like how Jesse handled this is there's so much that's packed in to this really short story that it mm -hmm. doesn't feel like you read something so short. Right. And typically I don't like flashbacks or devices where you're spending a chunk of time talking about or reading about the past. Mm -hmm. But here it really worked well for me. So like the cute meat we actually get is like, this is what happened back here. And a couple of these bad dates, you just get pieces uh, of. Okay. But it, and it, it works here because of course this is Valentine's day. And after things have gone wrong, now Derek has shown up to kind of that one last push to win Oliver on Valentine's day. Uh, but we get all the backstory set up in a very naturalistic. So much like you, there was no info dump to put everything you know, out there, it was more about here's what you need to know and here's why you need to know it. Mm -hmm. And it's very organically told inside the story yeah. without losing your momentum. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that, Jesse. <laughs> so I would love some way to hear more about these two, how they make it work. So more please, Jesse. I don't know how you'll do that. Maybe this can be a series or something. I don't know. So, but yeah, I highly recommend Love Magic uh, by Jesse Lee Ryan. Awesome. Now... The uh, fourth and final book that we're going to talk about in the Bad Valentines uh, con continuum series universe universe something like that. Um, it's called Quill Me Now by Jordan Castillo Price, 
and this is going to be difficult for me to talk about. I want to now. Whenever I review a book, I try and like write some notes down, just you know, some of the high high points of the things I want to talk about. Um, these are the notes for Quill Me Now. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a page full of scribbles. There is so much going on, so much amazing stuff going on in this story. Um, I'm going to try and capture it all in a review right now. Okay, so <laughs> first of all, Quill Me Now is an urban fantasy. Now, this is a, a subgenre that I normally wouldn't like touch with a 10-foot pole, but I gave it a try. Uh, this is my very first time reading Jordan Castillo Price, and I absolutely fell in love with it. This story is so damn good. Now, and I'm going to try and summarize my love for this story in this haphazard review. Okay, <laughs> so our main character is a guy named Dixon, and he is like super duper down on his luck. Um, he is... Uh, a spell crafter, uh, and he's essentially failed at the family business. Um, uh, there are, in this sort of magical world that Jordan Castillo Price uh, has created, um, people with magical abilities live alongside, you know, regular everyday people. And the family business is a little shop where uh, uh, members of Dixon's family have been like casting helpful spells for you know several different generations and it was just naturally assumed that Dixon would follow in the family footsteps but when it came time to uh, kind of take on the mantle of a, a spell crafter um, it didn't work out uh, in, in this particular magical world, there's essentially a, kind of a magic bar mitzvah where, <laughs> where in, in, in this case, a spell crafter receives his quill, which is uh, a plume that they write their spells with. And um, I it, love that. It, didn't, so cool. it did not go well for Dixon. So what's happening now is he is like living in the apartment uh, the attic apartment of his family's house with his cousin. They've got some cranky old guy living downstairs. Um, his only source of income is like uh, delivering food through like a DoorDash app. <laughs> and he's really terrible at it. <laughs> he can't even deliver food that sad. But one night uh, he sees uh, a notice for a contest on uh, contest on the back of a receipt from one of the restaurants uh, that he's delivered from and it is essentially uh, a sweet poetry contest for a greeting card company and so since you know he may not have succeeded at the family business uh, he knows how to write something cute and quippy, uh, so he <laughs> decides to give it a shot, and he enters this contest online. And it's like almost immediately, the moment he sends in his uh, entry, uh, he receives word back. And he's supposed to uh, show up at this greeting card company the very next day. So that's what he does. He, he wins essentially the very first round, and he has to go in and audition uh, to uh, essentially for the next round to get this prize money, which he desperately needs. Uh, and he shows up at the Precious Greeting Card Company, and um, it's really strange. Uh, all is not what it seems at Precious Greetings. It's this, <laughs> it's this really, like, like, dystopian, oppressive place. Um, but he needs the money, and so he continues through, and he ends up taking a meeting with the owner of the company, a uh, kind of a weirdo, a, a weird, creepy guy named Flint. Uh, and there's a lot of security at Precious Greetings, uh, and the head of the security at the greeting card company is this enormous, burly Russian bodyguard named Yuri. Um... Now, Yuri is desperate to keep Dixon from becoming enslaved just like him. Um, Yuri, as we eventually find out, uh, also has magical powers, but he is held under a spell by Flint. So while um, Dixon is like desperate to prove himself, Yuri is like desperate to like 
keep him away and uh, away from Flint uh, because he's got like a, a nefarious plot uh, underfoot. Um, wow. Um, there's an awful lot going on in this story, but what's really wonderful and what Jordan Castillo Price has managed to do is through very simple but elegant prose, she has managed to um, not only pull me into the story and make me believe all the kind of wacky stuff that ends up going on, but the, the prose is simplistically elegant. It tells us exactly what we need to know when we need to know it. There's no giant... Uh, one of the biggest pet peeves I have with like sci-fi and fantasy and, and, you know, to a certain degree, even urban fantasy is like, you know, a extensive world building, you know, mm -hmm. pages and pages of info dump about, you know, blah, 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 blah this happened a hundred years ago and blah, 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 <laughs> blah on the Cthurian planet of the third emperor and blah, 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 blah. you know all this stuff it's like i don't care just tell me what i need to know about the characters and that's exactly what jordan castillo price manages to do now uh, this is only like a fraction of what goes on in the story i'm just going to stop right now um because there's a uh incredibly sexy and an incredibly thrilling conclusion um that I really want you to experience for yourself. I usually hate it when reviewers say, oh, you know, ooh, spoilers, or I'm not gonna tell you how the ending goes. But I think this is genuinely one of those occasions where I think it's worth me not spoiling uh, how the book ends. Of course, it's a romance and they do end up together. They end up defeating evil and all that fantastic good stuff. Um, so I really recommend Quill Me Now. I wanna say that God damn it, Jordan Castillo Price. While I was reading it, I was loving it and enjoying it. And I was like, you know what? This is really fascinating stuff. This would make a fantastic novel. And when I got to the end of this story, uh, there was just a quick note from the author saying that this was going to be a launching point for a brand new series. So... On the one hand, that made me incredibly happy because I definitely want to learn about Dixon and Yuri's like continued adventures. But on the other hand, it's like, God damn it. Like I need another series to read. My TBR is already like a million miles high. But um, I suppose that's a quality problem to have. Yeah. So anyway, I highly recommend Quill Me Now by Jordan Castillo Price. You are going to love it. Fantastic. So you'll be able to find the links to these books in the show notes for episode 175. And of course, if you haven't listened to that episode to hear the review of Deb Bantham's book, do check that out. Thank you so much for joining us for this special bonus to look at the Bad Valentine series. And wish you, we wish you all a very happy Valentine's Day. For detailed show notes and links to everything discussed in this episode, go to biggayfictionpodcast.com. New episodes are available every Monday at all major podcast distributors. You can also find us on YouTube. I'm Derek McLean. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. <laughs>